Inside 228, there are a series of quick, quick thoughts that some people go through, which ends up with the person feeling disempowered and therefore inclined to settle for second best or even lower possibilities, such as a person sees no possibility of finding a spouse to interact with lovingly, mentally, emotionally, and sexually. Therefore, one might yield to fantasy, which, which might not be the primary goal one is looking for. This is true in areas of aspirations and economics as well. Therefore, we understand that one's objectives and plans for the future are already limited to one's belief of the limit in one's ability to affect changes in the world, near or far around us. If you had, if you had your way, what would you do? Meaning, if you perceived no obstacle blocking you, what would you do? What would you decide to be? In what manner would you behave in various circumstances? What would be your priorities? So here, what I'm saying is that often why sometimes, sometimes we fall into uh, behaving sexually uh, uh, for this reason. And the reason is um, that you think quite quickly. The thoughts run, run through your head quite quickly, a series of thoughts. For example, you think, oh, I, you know, I don't have a, a, a partner, I don't have a love, I'm not married, I'm not going to have a sexual interaction, I'm not going to have a loving interaction. And this, this um, leads you into uh, and you're feeling disempowered. And you're inclined to settle for second best, for some, uh, from some, some other person, or not only go for sexual fantasies, but also you might just go and marry somebody else, <laughs> who's not somebody who you want to get married to. Uh, same with um, your aspirations, your your dreams, what you want to do. You know, let's say you you believe that you cannot achieve what you really want to do, so then you settle for this other thing. You know, you settle for this other thing, which you which you don't really want. You want to do this one, but you 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 have this belief that you cannot do that, so you settle for this one. Same with money. The same thing with money. Therefore, we understand that one's. I'm going to, I'm reading this again. Therefore, we understand that one's objectives and plans for the future are already limited to one's belief of the limit in one's ability to affect changes in the world. So you want to do something, whatever it is, right? Because you believe you cannot do this, you cannot do this in the world, you cannot, some, something in the world is blocking you from doing this, you believe that you cannot do it, and you have this belief system, so you don't do it, you set, 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 settle for second best. Your objective of doing something depends on your belief of what you can what you can achieve. Example: They have a they they have done this experiment on a on a flea where they put it in a glass bottle, glass, and uh, they cover the they put the flea in there and they cover the top of the glass with a sheet of plastic, let's say. They covered the lid. Anyway, so this flea jumps up and hits the... Can't get out of the glass, except that it hits the top of the uh, the covering constantly. Bing, 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 bing. So the flea just does this until it learns where the covering actually is. And then this, this flea just uh, jumps just enough to miss it. Jumps just enough to miss it. Learns to do that. Now you take off the covering. <coughs> The freak flea can jump out any time, but because it it believes that it cannot, it won't. It will jump just enough to reach the top of the the glass and go back down to the glass again. It won't jump out, even though it has the ability. It has learned, or mislearned in this case, that this is his limit. He believes that he cannot go beyond here, so he remains in the glass. Are you remaining in your glass? Believing that you cannot achieve what you want to achieve? A 
I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you want to I'm going to give you Okay, so I'm going to give you an example of a, a person who's writing a book and he uh, wants to affect positive changes in society, right? This is my example. If somebody doesn't accept his book, he prints his own book. If no bookstore holds his book, he carries his book around and sells it to people. He becomes a bookstore. He might even buy his own store and make it a bookstore and store, sell his own book. If no organization will help him to, uh, if no organization sees the efficacy of the information, just doesn't know about it, and even even if they're approached by me, if I approach them and say, "Hey, I have this information, it's very helpful for your government or your organization to get involved in really getting getting help to people," they, if they'd say no and they don't want to get involved in all the stuff, then you build your own organization and you help people. So whatever at whatever step you get obstacles where you definitely cannot overcome, you build your own. All right, inside 229. The time when you are your most vulnerable is when your attention is not controlled. It is often in times of play, rest and relaxation, exploration and fun that you are caught off guard. Often when you engage in fun, you abandon clear, critical thinking, generally because you were overburdened by work, stress or other matters, or some other matter. Therefore, you must not be overstressed or overburdened in work or in any activity. Rather, you must start, do and end all activities in a balanced way. So, primarily, I would say be aware that where, when you're relaxing, you are generally in a state of uh, releasing your mind and you're quite vulnerable to uh, influences. So you need to be aware of this. When you're exploring, when you're having fun, similar situation. You're, you're off guard. You're, you're, you're not guarding yourself when you're having fun you're having fun you know so you need to be aware that in this state of fun exploration or relaxation that you're susceptible and you need to be uh, aware of this so that's kind of a guard as well um, and uh, yeah don't let your guard down have fun but also have this one guard still available knowing that hey you know, in other words, be aware that in this state of fun, uh, you you want to uh, be aware not to be influenced as well by negative influences. Um, so, like overwork, if you work too much and you come home, your mind is stressed. You can't think clearly. You want to abandon thinking. You know, that's what you do. You abandon thinking because you work so much. It's got thinking uh, you know, um, causes uh, a bit of stress in your mind so you need to be aware I remember I had this uh, app and it showed how much uh, the um, brain uses energy and it said 20% of it is of the energy is, is used by the brain that's a lot 20% so thinking causes a lot of stress there's a lot of uh, energy you know anyway so so if you're working a lot Stressed and mental and physically. Ah, oh, you're tired. I'm gonna go home and rest and just be and, and get involved in some pleasurable activities of being yourself. You know, um, watching television or whatever it is that you do it to enjoy. Um, you're in that mind set of just not thinking, just having fun and being, being. And in that state, uh, you want to be aware that you are able to be easily influenced and not totally let your guard down and the way to overcome that is by not killing yourself or at work in other words don't be so hard working to overburden yourself 
this is robbing yourself of your life. This is no good. You want to do work in a moderate way. If you try it, you see you, you'll be able to do it. This is also in any activity. Any activity, if you do, just do too much of it, you, you put you instead of imbalance and then you, you, you know you want to relax and uh, you let your guard down from your mind because you're not thinking and you're able to be influenced. Just know that this is um, the, how it is and you learn to not work so much it's so, so hard and also uh, you'll learn to guard yourself and not be totally off guard when you're relaxing. Okay, Insight 230. Having understood the knowledge, the very moment you decide to take decisive action to regulate your mind and your senses and to direct them by involving them in slow conscious actions you know that you have conquered and you realize that uh, uh, that all along you fell into the trap of distractions because you allowed it this would occur because you were in a receiving mode rather than in a directing mode in order to direct your mind and senses you allowed your mind to be directed okay yeah so basically let me read that last sentence again. So, this would occur because you were in a receiving mode rather than in a directing mode in order to direct your mind and senses. You allowed your mind to be directed. So, having understood the knowledge, the very, meaning the knowledge in the book as a whole, the very moment you decide to take decisive action to regulate your mind and your senses and to direct them by involving them in a slow in slow conscious actions you know that you have conquered and you realize that all along you fell into the trap of distractions because you allowed it meaning yourself you know so in sense that uh, gratification this would occur because you were in a receiving mode rather than in a directing mode. So you were simply in a receiving mode. You don't want to be caught in a receiving mode. So, um, I remember seeing a video of one of my relatives interacting with a child. And they were talking back and forth and having playing a little game of some sort. It was very, very interactive, very engaging. Both the child and the adult, very alive and engaged. The television was on while this interaction was going on. The adult looks to the television and his whole body, his whole demeanor, head to toe becomes motionless absolutely motionless and he's taking in the information given provided by the television <coughs> it was quite uh, striking the difference just a second earlier this man was so alive and interactive with this kid and now he's completely motionless receiving the data coming into him from the television so notice that when you're sitting in front of television you're in a receiving mode you're receiving <laughs> don't be pu putting yourself in a totally receptive mode a receiving mode because what happens if you do that if some sexual influences are out there because you're totally in a purely in a receiving mode it's going to be received quite strongly and it's going to impact you you want to have guards you want to be conscious and aware Inside 231, regardless of the possible outcomes of a relationship or marriage, such, a, such as being happy emotionally, mentally, and or sexually, it is important to be your truest self. 
take pleasure in being yourself. We get taught by society that marriage, love in a marriage relationship or a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, this kind of partner relationship is where uh, life and happiness resides. We are taught this. So that's where we look for it. Because that is, it, is, it is talked about so much, shown visually so much in so many movies and books and this and that. But I understand that happiness really resides in you being happy. I'm going to give you a little insight into this. How can you be happy with a partner? How can your happiness how can your happiness depend on your relationship with your partner? When your partner can for innumerable reasons, for many, many reasons, leave you. They can misunderstand you, they can cheat on you, they can die on you. So many innumerable reasons why they can be separated from you. And there goes your happiness. What kind of a happiness is that? That at any moment they can leave you? That's not happiness. That's, that's misery. Happiness, a happiness, a happiness that derives from yourself, that you're in control of, if your happiness depends upon something within yourself, from you, that cannot be possibly separated from yourself, that like cannot take it away. Ah, now you have something that's stable, that you can rely on. If your happiness is, is dependent on something outside yourself, then that's not happiness, because that thing outside yourself can be separated from you at any moment. So, your happiness, eternal happiness, should depend on something within you, within yourself, something that cannot be separated from you, because it's always with you. Okay. So that's why here I'm saying, it is, it is important to be your truest self. Take pleasure in being yourself. Two thirty-two. Often in this modern life, people are exceedingly busy to such a degree that they might easily lose sight of their own characteristics, qualities, likes, dislikes, and future plans. Therefore, it becomes necessary to spend quiet time at a secluded, calm place to slowly but surely regain one's original consciousness. It is beneficial to engage in activities that resonate with one's true self. If you do activities with friends, make sure that they are of a truthful and positive nature. These activities, such as sports and hobbies, ought to be done alone as well. Otherwise, one gets addicted to friends. It is beneficial for the person to do them alone because he becomes familiar with the pleasure of focus, concentration, centeredness, and an iron will to self-govern, mastering oneself. This trains the mind to be more focused and independent in order for the mind not to be easily swerved. You will, in short, learn to be happy, in a positive mood, feeling pleasure, all on your own, not dependent on anybody else. Yeah, you can have fun with your friends and pleasure and all the stuff, but you're not totally dependent on them because you've practiced being happy and pleasurable while with yourself, doing various activities. Inside 233. As long as the horse believes that there is a possibility of reaching the dangling carrot in front of him, 
he might choose to now and again to be anxious and active in trying to get the carrot. Similarly, as long as a person believes that there is a possibility of reaching a satisfying, marvelous and safe sexual encounter, he might choose to now and again to be anxious and active in trying to actualize that encounter. So the illusion is built online. The illusion is built through the various sexual presentations that such an encounter is entirely possible. <coughs> but we know that for the most part this is untrue. Being engaged in various sexual, sexual activities with many numerous people is liable to get you uh, diseased. So it's good to get that out of your head. <laughs> Welcome back to reality. And stop teasing yourself. <laughs> stop being teased. You know, here, how you can have this? You can't. No, you can't have it. It's fake. Get rid of it. Inside 234. Once the horse realizes that he can be satisfied with his freedom, he is free from the bondage of his want, and freed from the bondage of control. He is free to pursue being himself. Once you, re once you realize that you can be satisfied with your freedom, you are freed from bondage of control because you have no chains of desires to bind you. Once you realize that you can feel so fantastic being free, ah. <laughs> You will run to it. You will go do it. Being yourself. You go being yourself and forget this nonsense, entrapment, desire. Yeah. <laughs> Inside 235. Imagine a luxurious, pristine garden with beautiful exotic flowers grouped in various sections around this vast garden. It has waterfalls and water running through it and pathways with easy resting chairs spread throughout. This garden does not have fences, gates and guards. Does not have. Do you see, do you see that the well-being of this garden is dependent on the people who have access to it? If people are caring and neat, the garden will be kept in good condition. However, if there is one individual, just one individual, who is disrespectful of his surroundings, the garden is in danger. If there were gates and guards, the facility would be kept pristine from unwanted outside influences. Describe a little bit about the Inside 235. So, you have a garden, an elaborate garden with unbelievably beautiful flowers, all colors, shapes places, rivers, and waterfalls, all these things, and benches around. If this garden has no gates, if this garden has no guards, it only takes one person to mess it up. He goes there, eats his food, throws garbage around, you know, walks all over the grass, you know, smacks the flowers, whatever, all this stuff. It, it, the, the, the garden will be in a mess. It's at the mercy of just one person who is ill-mannered. It's crazy. So you don't want, that, that garden is not, not going to last long. You know, so when you build a garden, it has precious things in it. You want to be kept, you want to have this garden kept in a very good condition. You have to have guards, you have to have gates, right? Cleaning crew, crew and all the stuff, right? Maintainers of the garden. Now, think of your mind. The mind has to be guarded similar to this garden. Your mind is precious. All sorts of things are happening in, in your mind and you use your mind. So it's, it's very dear to you. You can't have everybody, you can't have just even one person come into your mind and mess it up. You just cannot allow not even one person through the senses through the doors of your senses, through, through the gates of your senses, to enter your mind and influence it in a negative way. No, 
you, you as a guard, you're appointed as a guard over your, um, over, over your mind, the guard of gates of your mind. You have to guard the gates. You have to guard what you see. You have to guard what you hear. You have to guard what you think of. You have to guard your own body, your, your tongue, your senses, everything. Guard whoever, whoever is within your vicinity, your ears, what you can hear, you know. Why you want to? Because you want to keep your mind pristine, like this beautiful, fantastic garden, so that you can use it. My God, have you, have, you know, have you been to such a garden where the flowers are just fantastic, super, and then the flow of water, and you sit there and you see the swans? Such a, such a fantastic pleasure it is to be in such a garden, you know. The smells of the flowers, you know, and so think of your mind this way. If your mind was this, ah. Oh, such a pleasure your mind would be for you to experience your mind in this pure pure state you experience yourself others interacting with you it's fantastic so keep it clean clean your mind and keep it clean be the guard don't allow anybody to come into your mind disturbing it through your senses okay The more precious a thing is, this is inside 236, the more precious a thing is, the more protected it must be. Houses have walls to protect ourselves, our possessions, and our precious family from unwanted influences. We're talking about this being similar to the gates of the guard, the guards, now it has walls. In the same manner, it is inappropriate to let anyone and anything influence our mind. If that happens, our mind's condition will be at the mercy of others, and if there is only one person who means ill towards us, our mind will be disturbed and in chaos. Therefore, you are appointed as the guard of your mind. You are to not allow anyone who is ill-mannered or chaotic to enter through the gates. The gates of the eyes, nose, skin, mouth, ears, and imagination or thought of your mind. Inside 237, an individual must become an expert in disallowing outside influences to penetrate the mind. Negative influences from outside and from within are barred from entering, and the mind is left undisturbed and remains in pristine condition. 237 again an individual must become expert in disallowing outside influences to penetrate the mind it's through the senses negative influences from outside and from within such as your imagination or body are barred boom, 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 big barred barred they're not allowed barred from entering and the mind is left undisturbed and remains in pristine condition. Yes, remains pure, wonderful, fantastic. Side 238. The time spent in misadventures could be spent in the company of your phenomenal self, in adventure, life, self-improvement, learning of the many of many sciences, including the science of relationships, the science of raising kids, the science of finding a good good partner. You can use these sciences to find good partners. Get married, raise kids, spend wonderful hours talking, understanding, and relating emotionally and mentally to your wife and raising your children. You can also learn to improve your communication with your spouse. In addition, there is enjoyment in interacting mentally and emotionally, meaning in friendship, with other quality people as well. All beings are, in some way, related to every other being. This is what I mean by relationships. In this and the following insight. In short, you have yourself to interact with on all four levels of mentally, emotionally, physically, I do not mean sexually, and spiritually. You have the whole world to interact with on these same four levels. You also have your partner, which is your spouse, to interact with on these four levels, including sexual, sexually. So basically, you, you have 
the ability to interact with all beings mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, but but not sexually. Sexually is just with your with your partner. And uh, yeah, there is there is uh, all these sciences that you get involved in and really improve in, in relationships, uh, all sorts of relationships. Um, there's really good stuff about nannies online. Uh, the program on television about nannies raising kids uh, or nannies coming to uh, help in troubled situations where the parents have a difficult time raising their kids or um, disciplining them in some sort of way. They have difficulty, great difficulty. These are really, really great programs. I recommend them to you to see how, how to interact with kids who you have, have some trouble with. To look at these this, um, programs about nannies that uh, are brought in to help with their expertise. These are really good. Insight 239. Those who are single, do not think that you are alone. You have the company of a phenomenal person, yourself. <laughs> that sounds funny because <laughs> yourself is being alone. But, yes, you are in the company of a phenomenal person, yourself. Yes. You have access to your mind and feelings. Therefore, you can truly appreciate yourself. You have access to your mind and feelings. You have access to your mind and feelings. Therefore, you can truly appreciate yourself. There is no one besides God who can know you and appreciate you as deeply as you can and appreciate yourself. Deep. You can know and appreciate yourself. Who has access to you? No one has access to your mind and emotions. Only God, if you believe in Him, and you have access to your thoughts and emotions. Therefore, you should be the one to appreciate your own thoughts and emotions and yourself. You have other quality people to interact with mentally and emotionally in friendship and various relationships. You and all beings are part of this grand existence. You are part of this mysterious and marvelous universe. Know that you are a marvel. Be in sweet pleasure of this marvel that you are and from this understanding, interact with other marvels in existence. In short, you have yourself to interact with on all four levels, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Uh, you have the whole world to interact with on these same four levels. Inside 240, one who is not allowed to think is controlled. Their life is determined by others and whatever that might come. One who does not have free time is a person who is not allowed to think. Any action is performed within a time frame. Proper thinking requires solitude and solitude requires time. You must make time to be in solitude to give your mind the chance to behold the world in the clearest, most objective way. Without this time of reflection, you are incapable of making various correct decisions about the direction in your life. A person who is not allowed to think, right, doesn't have time to think, is not allowed to think. How is their life going to be? Their life is going to be determined by others, what others do to him, what others have plans for him, and whatever might come. Whatever might come. It's like his life is up to circumstances, because he's not going to be able to think. So you need time. You need time. Thinking requires time, and you need time to think. When you're even in the presence of another person, your whole thinking process is altered. You're, you need to be by yourself. Be yourself. You can be yourself totally in seclusion. By yourself. Then you can be yourself. Then you can think very, very clearly. Then you can make decisions very clearly.
Inside 241, according to your life schedule, find free time and a private place. Recline on the floor on your back in such a way that from the top of your head to your legs there is a straight line. Move your legs away from your body in a V-shape for the purpose of your comfort. Do the same with your arms with your palms facing up. Now imagine that you do not you do not have any you do not have to do anything. Imagine that you do not have to be anywhere. Lose your sense of hurry. Release your every sense of obligation. Take this time and experience just being. Taste this state. Become familiar with it. Learn its pleasure. This feeling is your sacred space. You can have the sacred, sacred experience where, wherever you are and no matter what you are facing. When you feel this sacred, this sacred space, you can recall it without lying down. It will be with you and you will experience it. All you have to do is to choose to experience it. However, first you must taste it in order to not know, to know in order to know how it feels like and in order for you to be able to experience it w whenever you want. It is this clarity that is needed for you to start perceiving clear clearly. So yeah, lie down on the floor on your back with your feet somewhat in a V shape and your arms similarly out. I have a diagram of it on the, uh, in the back of the book. Not on the back, but in the, towards the rear of the book. Let's see if I could show it to you. Here, there it is, that's the diagram. Oops, there you go. Okay. All right. And you want to release your thoughts of anything, of, any, of anything that you have to do or not do. Chores? No. No chores. No hurry. No nothing. Just there. Just there. mind relax, let your mind go. <clears throat> you want to experience the pleasure of the state. You may not get it first time, you might get it first time, but in any case uh, it's possible that at first you might, your mind could be quite busy and uh, you you may need practice let it go because your mind could have be like a big jar full of stuff you know and so it may take a while to empty this jar of your mind of these obligations and things and to do and it's ah yeah so through many practices of lying down just simply being and letting go of your mind cleansing your mind of this garbage you may be to experience you might be able to experience just instead of being it's very pleasurable and once you experience it, you go, ah, oh, this is very nice. And you want to taste more and more of it. And also, you're able to access it, if you will to, any time during the day, without lying down. <clears throat>
if you feel that you want to allow sexual thoughts and you want to view them by your senses because you feel compelled to know more about it, then expose yourself to it in order to complete your understanding of their tricky methods. Upon doing this numerous times, I emphasize numerous, you will notice that you, you really do know the methods that they employed and that you are not learning anything new and the reason and the reason why you are being influenced is only because you allow the thoughts to come into your mind. As you remember, whatever reality is, reality is prominent in the mind, it asserts its influence over the mind and it becomes real to the mind. It being the sole reality that is real in the mind, the mind has no alternative but to work with the confines of the reality that it knows. The, pers the person cannot help but be influenced by the soul reality in the mind. Therefore, that last step to the summit of victory and total control over this elusive multi-headed dragon of sexual fixation and sexual attraction is to not allow it to enter the mind by stopping yourself from thinking any sex-related thoughts. In short, you will not allow the presence of sexual thoughts in your mind. So, basically, When thoughts come into the mind through the senses, grabbing the attention, grabbing the mind by the attention, by the powerful contrasts and other various manipulations, grabbing the attention, right? Because you know the tricks, you, 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 you are not surprised. And you go, oh, my mind finds this and this and this attractive for this reason, the potency of this is because of this and this you know about them, and you are unimpressed. And you're gonna focus on peace, control, and other things. If you allow yourself to focus on these matters that you know about, you have the great potential to be influenced by them. Why? Because you're allowing your mind to form a reality that is that, that, that reality, that's it. That's what you're allowing in your mind. You want to be able to control the reality your mind is focused on. And if you focus on sexual reality, the sexual reality will overtake. If you focus on peace reality, peace reality will overtake and you will experience peace. The only reason we and a lot of people focus on the sexual experiences or sexual depictions is because they are grabbing the attention using tricky methods. But understanding that how the tricky methods work, you're no longer impressed. You actually control your own focus, your own attention and you draw it back to peace, control love, anything positive, away from this garbage. The only reason you might want to focus on the sexual misinformation is because you, you're still trying to learn some new ways that you haven't totally completely understood uh, or identified. Identified or understood, you need to understand it of these various methods so that you can master them. So you may succumb to them, you may be falling under the influence of sexual influences uh, because you focus on trying to solve and understand these uh, ways that are uh, of manipulation which you're not familiar with yet. So, upon studying many, many of these um, tricky methods, you, you've basically mastered 99% of them. You, you know about them. And the only reason you, you're left um, influenced is because you keep focusing on them. So the last step to victory, complete victory, is to disallow them, disallow them entry into your mind. They cannot enter your mind because you know the tricky methods and you don't fall for it. To, you don't fall for it, you don't allow them to grab your attention. Because your, your mind is unimpressed because it doesn't impact your mind. 
It doesn't impact your mind because you know how the tricky methods work. Therefore, your, your attention is not grabbed. And this way you remain in peace, calm, and happy and joyous. Any questions you have, uh, do let me know.